Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com and today I thought I would do a video on the Heights tab found in the Fusion 360 CAM environment. Uh, I'm using the part that you can find in the in the CAM samples directory and I thought I would just uh, kind of go through some of the different height settings and, and what they mean and how you can use those to your advantage. If we look at this part, I've got a setup created. I've got a little extra stock above it some extra stock to hold on to below it and the stock is a little bit bigger than the part all the way on the outsides. So let's start out on this part by creating a 2D facing operation. So from the 2D menu I'm going to select face. I'm going to go grab a tool. I'm going to just go to the sample tutorial inch uh, and grab this 2 inch face mill. I'm not so concerned with the, with the, uh, with the tool in this one anyway. Uh, the geometry we're just going to machine everything and in the heights now here's, uh, when we when I get to the heights, I kind of say it's oftentimes better to start from the bottom and work your way up. So let's talk about these different height fields. I'm going to start with the top height and the bottom height. The top height is where you want your cut to start, and the bottom height is how deep you want your cut to go. So when we defined our setup, we told Fusion what the model was. We told Fusion how big the stock was, or maybe we even selected it from a solid. And we oriented the Z uh, arrow in the right orientation. The Z arrow dictates to Fusion what's top and what's bottom as it relates to this particular setup. So everything here, the very top of this part right there, that's going to be my top face. I also have things like stock top, model top, stock bottom, uh, selected contours. So if we go through and look, in this case, the top height it's cutting from the top of the stock and it's cutting down to the model top, which is exactly what we want for a facing operation. If I if I look at the from, there's a drop down, and you can see these are all the known things that Fusion knows about: the clearance height, retract height, feed height, bottom height, model top, model bottom, stock top, stock bottom, selected contours, a selection or an origin. So we can Fusion understands what each one of those things are, so we can use those as reference points. For each of for each of these fields, you'll also notice that there's an offset. So here I could tell Fusion that I'd like to, you know, start, we're starting from the stock top, but I could say, you know what, I want to start 20 thousandths of an inch above that, and I could type in a positive .020 number. I could also tell Fusion I want to start below that height by putting in a negative number in that field. Same thing with the, with the bottom height. The bottom height in this case is set to be the model top, so we're facing the stock from the top of the stock to the top of the model. And it wouldn't make sense to do an offset here, but we could. Maybe we want to come back with another facing operation or a more precise facing operation later on. We could leave some stock here. So if I put a positive, you know, 0 .010, that would leave ten thousandths of an inch of stock above the top of the part. So these are the two that the two fields that you're most often going to be changing when you're going and doing cam operations inside of Fusion. Let's. Uh, there's a feed height as well. Now, one of the other awesome things that uh, Fusion does really well uh, in the cam environment is if you hover over different uh, fields, it'll tell you what that field is. So here we're looking at feed height. And if I hover my mouse over that, a flyout will appear, and it gives me a definition of what the feed height is. So here you can see what a, what the feed height is, and it also gives you below a little bit more of a definition. Uh, a, a shorter definition for each of the other uh, fields. However, hover over any of these in the boxes and you'll get a more extended for that particular uh, field. So for instance, top height. You can see top height now flies out and gives more information than what top height would show in the bottom uh, little bullet points down there. So if we look, oftentimes we have to, feed height is going to be set to something plus something. So in this case, feed height is going to be equal to the top height, which in our case is stock top, plus an offset of 200 thousandths of an inch. So in this case, we know the feed height is going to start 200 thousandths of an inch above the stock on the part. If we look up, we have the retract height. The retract height is set to stock top, which is and then plus 200 thousandths of an inch. So in this case, the retract height and the feed height are, would, be, uh, would be equal. Now we look at the clearance height. The clearance height is equal to the retract height. So we got to go down one more field to find out what the retract height is. The retract height is the stock top plus 200 thousandths of an inch. 
So that would start at 200 thousandths of an inch, but now we have another 400 thousandths of an inch offset. So we're 600 thousandths of an inch above the stock for our clearance height in this case. So sometimes it's helpful to kind of, you know, look at what it's being calculated from and what the offset value is. And clearance height in this case is set to retract height. So we got to go down and look at what retract height is set to. Retract height is set to stock top. Um, and then we could look at the different fields, you know, what the top height, what the bottom height is. So with that, let's go ahead and choose OK and just create a facing operation. And now let's go ahead and do a 2D adaptive clearing. So I'm going to choose 2D adaptive clearing and I'm going to select a tool. In this case, I want to grab a little quarter inch flat. Uh, for the geometry, I'm just going to click on the face. If we look, we'll go back to the Heights tab. Now again, I'm holding this in a vise. So you'll often see in videos and things, people just kind of blow by, blow by the clearance height and their track height. And uh, I'm going to kind of do the same. So now on the top height, it's cutting from the stock top. But if you remember in the last operation, we removed the top of the stock. We removed the stock from the top of the stock to the top of the model. So instead, we could set this to be model top. So now in this case, we're cutting from the model top to the selected contour, the thing that we selected on. And so that's exactly what we want to do. Um, now in this case, I think I only left 50,007 inch above uh, the model top for the stock. So we're only saving ourselves 50,007 inch, but it's just a good idea to get in a good practice of uh, looking at this. Uh, for this video, I'm not going to worry about the passes that are linking. I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. And now there you see we get a tool path where the uh, it spirals down, um, down to the bottom. And I do want to look at one thing on the passes tab. I want to make sure that I left some stock to leave. So I left 20 thousandths on the floor and 20 thousandths on the wall. I'm going to set this to be 10 and 10. We'll go ahead and hit OK and it'll recalculate. So we left material on the floor and on the walls. Now let's do a pocketing operation that will come back and clean up those the floor and the walls. So from the 2D menu, I'm going to choose 2D pocket. I'm going to use that same quarter inch flat. For the geometry, I'm just going to click on that bottom face. For the heights in this case, we're going to come back and take a look at this in a minute. And on the passes, I just want to make sure that we don't leave any stock to leave. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And there we get a tool path that goes down and it cleans uh, down to the bottom you know face here but if we look in the previous operation we already roughed out this material with the 3d adaptive so there's no reason for this tool to need to spend all that time helixing down to get down just that last 10 thousandths of material that needs cleaned up so let's see if we can fix some of that on the heights tab i'm going to right click and edit this operation and let's go to the heights tab so here we have where it's cutting from we're cutting from the stock top to the selected contours in this case. I want to cut to the selected contours. I don't want to start from the stock top. Instead, what I'm going to choose here is I'm going to choose selected contours again. So in this case, we're cutting from the contour we selected to the contour that we selected. So essentially, we're, the tool isn't moving at all. It's going down to one plane and doing all its work. But we know we left 10,007 inch of material. So for the offset here, I'm going to enter in 0.01. I'm going to enter 10,007 inch uh, above for the first selected contour, right? So we're going to start 10,007 inch above that, and we're going to cut down to the selected contour. So we're going from selected contour to selected contour, but for the top, uh, for the top height, we're we're offsetting that by a positive 10,007 inch. Let's go ahead and choose OK, and there you can see things got a lot better. Um, we only have a few helixes in there, but that's still a few too many. And uh, one of the places I'm going to show this is kind of maybe a little bit of a bonus. One of the other places that we can change this is we can edit this and we can go to the linking tab. And here you can tr control the ramp. Now there's different options you could do. You could say that, you know what, I just want to plunge. If I, if I hit plunge and click OK, now it just goes right to that depth. Uh, with a smaller tool like this in 10 thousandths of an inch, um, I'd rather just do a, a small helix into it. So I'm going to edit that and go back to the linking. Um, so I'm going to set this back to ramp, I'm sorry, back to helix for the ramp type. And you'll also see that there's a, the, a ramp clearance height that's set to a hundred thousandths of an inch. So right now it's telling the helix to start a hundred and ten thousandths above, uh, the floor of the part. So let's just go ahead and change this to be 0 0.001. 
we'll just give it a very small little helix in and choose OK. Now you see that we get a helix into the material, but we're wasting very little time to get down there. So I hope that understand, uh, helps to understand the Heights tab better. Um, the clearance height and the retract height become far more important uh, when you start working with clamps on your table or or other things like that that you need to worry about running into. Um, so my recommendation would be if you're often going to work in a, in a vise is to get the clearance height, retract height, and feet height values kind of set to defaults that you want and then you can focus on for the operations the top height and the bottom height and making adjustments there. Um, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and if you have any questions please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Have a good day.